Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 254 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you're brand new to the podcast, first of all, welcome. I'm so glad that you found us. But what took you so long? I've been here waiting to just fill your life with all sorts of amazing advice and tips on growing your membership. But hey, better late than never. I'm so, so glad that you found the show. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button in your podcast app to ensure that you do not miss a single weekly dose of proven practical tips and advice on growing your membership business. If you are a long-time subscriber, you know that I love you. You know I appreciate you joining me each and every week. I do have a little favor to ask you if it's not too much trouble. If you've got a moment or two, I would love it. I would truly, truly love it and deeply appreciate it if you could take the time after this week's episode to leave a very quick and very nice review to let me know how the show has helped you. That will help us to reach other people and make more of a difference within the online membership world. So if you do have a chance to leave us a review, if you haven't already, then I would be very, very appreciative. Anyway, enough groveling, enough begging for good stuff from you guys. You came here for your membership advice, and that's what we're going to give you. This week, I'm talking all about trials, and specifically, how to decide whether or not you should offer a trial period for your membership site. Now, Opinions can often be divided when it comes to offering a trial of your membership site or online product. Some people consider it a smart and effective strategy. Others believe that you absolutely shouldn't ever give anything away, no matter what. Now, we land in the first camp. Broadly speaking, we are fans of utilizing trial periods as part of your membership pricing strategy, or at the very least, testing them out. They are proven to work extremely well for online memberships. However, we do recognize that trials aren't something that will necessarily be right for everyone or that they'll work for every membership and every audience. If you're still on the fence, here's some food for thought that will help you to determine whether you should try out offering a trial for your own membership strategy. So first off, the benefits of offering a trial for your membership site. When someone's considering whether or not to join your membership, your potential customer has a great number of questions going through their mind. Is this person or is this company really as good as they say they are? Will this membership site be everything that they promise it will be on their sales page? Have I really understood what they're offering? Is it going to be worth the money? What happens if I'm not happy or decide that I've made a mistake? Or are they just going to rip me off? Are they going to take my money and run? Now, try as you might to address these kind of questions and the multitude of other concerns that a potential member might have via your sales page copy, your emails, your other marketing that aims to try to address these objections, these concerns. They'll almost always still be some unanswered questions that your potential member has. So in truth, anyone joining your site might feel like they're taking a little bit of a risk. That's why top level marketers like Jay Abraham endorse the importance of risk reversal, incorporating a strategy that seeks to eliminate the risk that a user takes or even that they just feel they perceive when they choose to do business with you. Often risk reversal materializes in the form of money back guarantees. But trial periods are also a great method of risk reversal that enables you to address potential customer concerns that could be getting in the way of making sales. The most important thing is that a trial gets people into your ecosystem, into your wheelhouse, and it gives you an opportunity to prove why your membership site is a one that they need to be part of. By giving people just enough time to get stuck into your product, to become introduced to your business and your community, you stand a better chance of making them want to stick around. You're also able to create a little bit of fear of disconnect by showing people what they would miss out on if they don't continue on into becoming a full member of your site beyond their trial period. So if you offer a trial, should it be paid or should it be free? The natural inclination is to make your trial period 
free. But there is definitely a case to be made for charging a small fee rather than having a free trial. Even charging an amount as small as $1, requiring an exchange of monies for your trial rather than just giving that time away for free can increase the psychological buy-in that someone has to your product. It can also be a means of filtering out the freebie hunters who have no intention of ever becoming a full member because for those people, or some of those people, that token payment, even just a dollar, would be too much of a barrier to bother with. Not necessarily because they can't afford the dollar, but because they're having to make a payment of any kind. It's just a little bit of added friction to turn away the freebie hunters that isn't such a barrier that people who actually are genuinely interested in your membership won't sign up. Another consideration in the free versus paid decision is that while most membership plugins and membership systems do enable you to offer trial periods, the method the technical method by which they do this would still require customers to input their debit card or their credit card details, which would then be charged automatically at the end of the trial if the customer doesn't cancel. So while you and I fully understand why this is a necessity, you know, if our membership plugin still needs the credit card details, whether it's free or paid, if the plan is to then automatically have a new subscription kick in at the end of the trial, there's every chance that if you're offering a free trial, the fact that you're still asking for card details or for someone to complete the PayPal transaction is going to make a potential customer unnecessarily suspicious that your free trial is actually not free it's a bait and switch or that they won't be able to cancel a one dollar trial or a similarly small nominal payment takes away that awkwardness because it's obvious then why you need them to enter their payment details because you need to take that initial small payment So even just based on that, obviously we talked about the advantages of having someone financially buy in to your product and the ability to filter out freebie hunters. But even with that aside, the suspicion that can arise unfairly, unnecessarily when you ask for car details, when someone's signing up for a free trial, that's definitely a big argument to consider maybe charging something like a dollar. And for you as well, it helps you to verify that their payment details are actually accurate and that reduces the chance that payments will fail when it comes time for the full subscription to actually kick in. So definitely some food for thought on whether you would charge for your trial or whether you would make it free. And this is one of those areas where results will vary according to your audience. So you might want to split test it. Now, one of the concerns that people definitely have about offering trials is that people will just sign up for a trial download everything or consume everything and then cancel this is a question and a concern that comes up a lot when we discuss trial periods ultimately it's important to understand in the world of online business that if someone wants to get their hands on your content without paying and they want it badly enough they'll find a way to do it if the movie industry cannot 100% tackle this, then what chance do you and I have? And furthermore, if someone is setting out with the intention of screwing you over, then they're probably going to be more paranoid about you screwing them over too. So they'll probably be overly paranoid about providing you with payment details when they sign up. And we also have to consider the absolute worst case scenario. While I'm definitely not questioning the value and the worth that your membership and your content have, for most of us running a membership, we're dealing in digital materials, ones and zeros, pixels on a screen. So if someone does download or watch all of your content during their trial period, yeah, it sucks, but it's unlikely to have actually cost you personally anything. And if you weren't offering a trial, then the people who might be inclined to try to cram all of your content in as quickly as possible, they would probably be the ones who would only stick around for one month and then they'd disappear anyway and they'd probably ask for a refund. So you're not exactly going to be losing high value customers if these people do use their trial to pack everything in. 
Ultimately, if someone is able to extract every ounce of value from your membership in just 14 days, 30 days, or however long your trial is, you probably have a larger problem to deal with in terms of what you're offering. We cannot allow the very, very, very small minority of those hit and run members to dissuade us from doing something that for 99.9% of what we do will actually be massively beneficial to our membership. So definitely making a case and making an argument for offering a trial. But in what situations does a trial just not make sense? Well, if your product is more of an online course or a coaching program than an ongoing membership site, a trial likely isn't something you want to consider because then it is far more likely that someone will just cram and binge their way through your course during that initial trial window. In fact, they may even see doing that as being a challenge. Often, people who are selling online courses will drip feed their lessons in order to either prolong the membership length or to give students more time to engage with the content. Again, this is an approach for which a trial would probably be ineffective because they're not getting enough of a taste of your membership to be likely to stick around. So an alternative strategy you could try is maybe having a a basic level of membership or even a free level, a free tier, whereby people register an account on your site in order to access a scaled back version of your membership or your offering on a permanent basis. So it's not 14 days, it's not 30 days or whatever. They have that introductory level where they maybe get some basic stuff. Often what we see is people who are offering lead magnets, so they're offering PDFs, checklists and so on to get people on their email list maybe they've got a dozen or so of those on their blog often what they'll do is they'll create a free membership level and then put all of those pdfs into that level and also maybe there's a free facebook group or free sections of a forum so it's definitely a scaled back introductory version of what you're offering and this gets people into your community and it gives you a means of exposing them to your main offering and encouraging them to upgrade to their membership. So if you really, really want to have some sort of free or low-cost access available to your membership, but a trial doesn't make sense, then an alternative is definitely to consider having that free or that basic low-cost membership tier instead. And the great thing with trials is that they're easy to test and they're easy to set up. Any membership plugin worth its salt has the ability to offer free or paid trials to your audience. It's a basic functionality that is typically very, very easy to implement. And so because of that, you can easily set up a test to see whether a version of your membership with a trial sells better than a version without. You can run this as a one-off promotion. So for this week only, we're giving you the opportunity to sign up for a 30-day trial using this special promo code. If it works really well, fantastic. You can then consider making that trial a permanent part of your membership strategy. If it doesn't do very well or if you have too many issues, then no harm done. It's been a self-contained promotion. You've done it once and you never have to do it again. And if you want to get really fancy, you can split test. So you can use something like Google Analytics, which enables you to do a split test where half of your traffic goes to a sales page with just the regular sign-up option. And the other half gets sent to a sales page with the option to sign up for a trial. And then you can just crunch the numbers. Which of those sales pages generated the most signups? And how well do the people who sign up on a trial actually convert into full paying members? And then comparing all other sorts of things like engagement levels, lifetime value, and all that between those two different options. So you can get real, real into the data and testing out uh, offering a trial versus not offering a trial. Or another great way of testing it, if you are still undecided, is to actually offer the trial only to existing subscribers on your email list who've maybe been on your list for six months or so, and they still haven't yet signed up for your membership site. You can actually make an offer to them to actually join on a trial as opposed to making that trial available to the public. So with all of this in mind, with everything we talked about here, there should be nothing stopping you from at least experimenting with adding trial periods in to your membership sales strategy. Again, Not always going to work for every type of membership. Some markets are more responsive to free trials than others. Some audiences are more risk averse and therefore more in need of 
risk reversal techniques like trials, like money back guarantees and so on. But then there are definitely some markets in which you might want to think twice about offering a trial. So, you know, internet marketing, stuff like that, where maybe you're going to have more people out there who are just interested in coming along, binging through your stuff within the first week, and they never have any serious intentions of joining. So this is all to say, while we do love trials, and while you see trials working very well within the spectrum of online memberships, they are something we always recommend testing out first with some of the techniques that we just talked about there before making them part of your overall marketing strategy. Hopefully this episode has helped. If you've been on the fence about running a trial for your membership, or maybe you've done one in the past and it's not gone quite how you wanted it to, then maybe some of what we covered is encouraging you to try it out again, or maybe to make changes to your existing trial offer Hopefully you have found this episode useful. That is it from me for another week. Remember, if you have just discovered this podcast and you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button in your podcast app because I'm here each and every week with a new dose of proven practical advice for growing your membership business and... If you feel so inclined, if you want to do us a big, big favor, then we would so, so appreciate if you can take a little bit of time to leave us a nice, friendly, positive review in your podcast app to let us know how this podcast has helped you out so that we can hopefully reach and help more people. I'd be very grateful if you get the chance to do that. That is it from me for this week. I'll be back again next week with another episode of the Membership Guys podcast. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. The Membership Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Membership Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership website. Check it out at membershipacademy.com.